I have a significant amount of garden space, and at my age, I would not be capable of doing the labor of keeping up with the weeds without using herbicide. The herbicide I use is glyphosate salts. Previously, they were sold under the name Roundup, but Roundup is now a group of chemicals with many varieties and types, and generic glyphosate salt I find to be a more appropriate weed control chemical. Each spring, I prepare all my beds by killing all the weeds. You'll notice here is a bed that was prepared last fall. I applied Roundup to it on three occasions in order to kill the bindweed, which was a pernicious problem. You will notice that the daffodils bloomed because they were dormant at the time of the application. Here I have my stock ready for planting, but first I will prepare all my beds, making sure that I have killed the majority of the weeds before I put the new stock in. I then wait for a window of opportunity as I must have 72 hours without rain in order for the herbicide to be effective. I use generic glyphosate salt, which is available on the internet for less than $40 for two and a half gallons, or it can also be bought at many agricultural supplies like Central Tractor. The generic glyphosate salt is quite cheap as compared with the Roundup, which there are a myriad of varieties. There is waterproof, high concentrate, low concentrate, persistent kill, all of which just adds to the confusion of using commercial Roundup, and I suggest generic glyphosate salt. I use a one-quart sprayer, which I buy from Walmart for about $5. I find this to be better than using a three-gallon sprayer as it gives me more accurate control. I use one ounce of concentrate to my one-quart container most of the time, and as much as four ounces to one quart on things that are particularly difficult to kill. I don't pressurize the sprayer a lot. Instead of getting a fine mist, I want the solution to dribble out of the nozzle so that the wind doesn't catch it and get it on things that I don't want to kill. Here you can see I've set up barriers to kill a section of garden. I sprayed this about four weeks ago, and now you can see that most of the vegetation is dead. As soon as it dries, I will throw a match in it and light it on fire in order to burn off the debris. I will then top dress the bed with a couple inches of soil. Sometimes I want to kill a small area. I use this protector in order to confine my spray area to just what I want to kill. By placing this over the top of the weed that I want to kill and then spraying inside, I don't suffer the danger of the wind spreading my spray to good plants. I spray with a sufficient amount to get a full wet coating on all the leaves. Here is bindweed, which is one of my most pernicious weeds. It has a rhizomatous root and cannot be pulled. The only way that I know of to kill it is with herbicide. Since it might be in with other plants, quite often I take a piece of PVC tubing, place it over the top of the bindweed plant, and then spray my herbicide inside the PVC tubing. I let it sit like that for a couple hours after spraying so that the glyphosate has a chance to dry before removing the PVC pipe. Here you can see I'm trimming the edges of my walkway. 
again by putting shields up to protect the grass that I don't want to kill. For large areas, I use 1 to 50 dilution of the glycifit salt, and for particularly pernicious and stubborn plants, I use as high as 4, in, four ounces per quart in order to guarantee that I get a good kill. Using herbicide each year saves me hundreds of hours of work and sure does save a lot of backbreaking effort. 